News cut content for season two, episode fifteen. How Subaru and Amelia's moment went in the novels. Oh, this is the episode where there's a lot of debate. There's a lot of uh, divide in the community. I hear a lot of people enjoyed the kiss from Subaru to Amelia. I thought the moment was phenomenal in terms of the direction, the soundtrack being played, the animation. Just everything building up to it was crazy, but. You know, Subaru being a groomer is a theory that I'd definitely be interested in dabbling in. And I do definitely have said a lot of things in the episode itself and how I felt about it. But hey, let's see what Mr. Anonews has to say. There were two very iconic events that happened this episode. The first was what's known as the Battle of the Lost Woods of Grimaldi. And mm -hmm. the second was the emotional climax between Subaru and Amelia. Climax. While the latter was done rather faithfully. There was still quite a bit more to talk about regarding the factors that even led us here. Okay. It's missing context that helps us to understand why this scene felt like it was just two little children having an argument. <laughs> it was, and I loved it. For the first time, I felt like both were finally saying what they had pent up in their minds, right? In the beginning, you want to just look good for each other, right? First stages in a relationship, or even before relationship, first date, you don't really know each other. So you want to just show the best sides, right? You want to hide all the nasty personal shit and just show the best sides. But later on, as you get to know more and more, the true side comes out and you might start even fighting against each other, saying about little things that pisses each other off. And I love this scene. Aside from that, quite a significant amount was also changed from the battle between Otto and Garfield. Okay. They didn't include what the novel considered to be Otto's ultimate attack. Aldona? So that's what we'll look at first. That sounds like an earth but magic. Before we get into that, I just Sponsor. wanted to let you guys know that my partners over at Bookwalker are having another sale. Up until January 24th, you can get up to 60% back in. Guys, up till January 2024, okay? 2021, January 2024, okay? I hope you guys have enough time to go sign up for that shit. Remember, this is done three years ago, okay? So you better get it quick. Episode 40 The Reason to Believe covering chapters 4 to 6 of volume 13 of the light novel. Let's start things off with when Garfield went to go check up on Shima. In case you didn't notice, it was the appearance of a second teacup that made Garfield start to worry. Second? It meant that someone other than him had gone to see her. Oh, okay. Now, one thing to note here is that Auto Garfield Subaru. didn't yet know that Amelia was missing. He only found that out as he was running around searching for Shima. You see, he just so happened to bump into Subaru, Ram, and Otto as they were also mid-search for Amelia. So, it was here that Subaru told Garfield that she was missing. Initially, Garfield believed this to be some type of ruse. But after seeing how shaken Subaru was by the fact of it, he decided to trust that there weren't any ulterior motives. The funny thing is, is that this acting? actually was a blunder on Subaru's part. Okay. Amelia wasn't supposed to have run away like this. Oh, I thought this is all part of his plan of like running away and making her go here by herself and be independent. I still don't really understand why the fuck he ran away. To make her be independent so that she doesn't want to be relied, like she doesn't have to rely on anyone else to cause the chaos? Because this is not to cause the chaos and throw Garfield off, no. What the fuck was he doing late at night? Strategizing with Otto and Ram, maybe? She just happened to wake up when Subaru went to go switch positions with Ram. Or so he says anyway. Switch positions. In any case, given that both Shima and Amelia were now missing, that made this situation all the more of an emergency. It forced Garfield to have to use his authority. So he decided he was going to use the clones to find Shima first, then My Amelia. lolly armies, go find said, He could have always just sent Shima a mental order. A command that would have forced her to come to his side. Mental order. It was certainly the easiest way of resolving the problem. Oh, okay. So apostles of something. They can just mentally also order people? I thought that it had to be the direct command. But even if they're far away, if we just thought in our head of my lolly army gather around me, they'll just show up? But that was something that went against his moral code. Because Shima and the other three were like his grandmother, Garfield vowed to never use his authority on them. There is no way you are fucking correcting me in chat saying of greed right now when I intentionally made apostle of something to make sure that it applied to every single sin rather than the obvious one being greed right now. That's what I fucking hate about my chat. Always looking for a way to correct me in single things that they don't even understand what I'm trying to do. It's just like, what the fuck am I doing, bro? Instead, he used the clones as a means to deduce their location. 
when the clones reported that they hadn't spotted Shima at all. It meant by implication that she could only be where a replica was not. Okay. So that meant she was at the hidden replication facility, a building where no clone was stationed and Garpiel himself only ever went to once a year. The purpose of which was only to pick up any new replica that had been made. <laughs> how, how many fresh lollies are created each year? <laughs> what's, the, what's the fucking production cycle? Now, when Garpiel saw that the only person there was Otto, he began regretting not taking care of Subaru from the beginning. You see, ever since he first laid his eyes on Subaru, Garfield knew that he couldn't stand him. Just the way his expression always looked as if he was staring off into some place far away, reminded him far too much of the person he hated the most. So, Garfield could- Roswell? Is this an implication to Roswell? Or... Because, like, mom- he doesn't resent mom and sister for leaving. He thinks that the world took him, but it's gotta be the Roswell example. Right? There's a lot of examples of Roswell's eyes and Super's eyes are the same too. Of the person he hated the most. So Garfield couldn't help but lament over not taking care of Subaru earlier. If he had, then none of this would have happened. But anyway, the reason Otto was even able to get to the jump on Garfield was because he had combined water and wind magic together to emulate the sound of footsteps. What? This forced Garfield to react to them, allowing Otto to approach from behind and discreetly steal the crystal. It was the first of many tricks that Otto had prepared for this. But Garfield wasn't just going to let Otto do as he pleased. And he certainly wasn't going to be held back from getting to Subaru. When he learned that Subaru was on his way to meet Amelia, there was a certain combination of empathy and instincts that made him want to prevent that meeting. His instincts told him that something bad would happen. And he felt a sense of pity towards the girl that was being forced to face the same cruel experience that he once did. Yeah, at the end of the day, right, they can re relate to each other because they both failed trial one and they could never get past it, but the more I think about it, the more just fucking Garfield pisses me off so much. He does, bro. <sighs> the last thing that we fucking need right now to be a fucking antagonist to get in the way, and I understand kind of why he's super mad, right? The miasma stacking. His fear of the outside world, what it could mean, I don't know, it's just, it's, it's just... And like how Subaru, I guess, reminds him of Roswell, someone he hates the most, but like... The more I just see this in auto, just Garfield just getting in the way, the more I'm just like... Motherfucker, I feel like this is only happening because you're so stupid. Pity towards the girl that was being forced to face the same cruel experience that he once did. Having already faced the trial before, Garfield knew all too well just how brutal it could be. So he couldn't help but feel a little bit sympathetic. Don't get me wrong though, his intentions were never to get in the way of Subaru and Amelia's mutual attraction. He just felt the need to save Amelia from her past, okay. something he knew he wouldn't be able to do if Subaru got the chance to talk to her. So the first thing that came to mind was to use the clones to find where Amelia was. Of course, Garfield still wanted to locate Shima. It's just that stopping Subaru was now the number one priority. As he reached for his crystal to so Garfield's doing all this because he cares about Amelia, guys. Because he can relate to Amelia, he doesn't want her to get fucked up by the past, and that's why he's just getting in her way. Just... Oh, just... I get it. I get it. It still fucking makes me mad. It just feels like an, like a, like an obstacle that we really don't need to fucking deal with right now. To give the orders. It was in that moment that he realized it was gone. Otto. Normally, this wouldn't have been very much of a big deal. I mean, they're not exactly a very rare material. In fact, they're actually nothing more than fragments that come from the giant crystal that seals the original Ryuzu. Okay. So, all Garfield really needed to do to get another one was simply go back to the source and break a new piece off. Is it sentimental it would have value, though? To give commands as if everything were normal. The reason he didn't, though, is because that fragment in particular was special. Very special. Oh. It was part of a memory that he couldn't afford to lose. And if you see it right, there's two of them here with mom, right? We got mom, we have Shima before she got banished from the Council of Four and has to wear a white jacket now in Frederica. Two crystals, one for Frederica, one for Garfield. There's sentimental value for it. One that was very important to him and one other person. So in order to get it back, Garfield rushed back to the facility in search of Otto. But Otto had already taken the opportunity to run away. It led Garfield to realize that this was all part of Otto's plans. He knew now that he was just being toyed with. 
and he knew that he needed to be more cautious now. Unlike how he lived his life by relying on strength, Garfield understood that Subaru and Otto were completely different. They lived their lives by relying Strategy. on their words and schemes, a trait that Garfield couldn't help but admire. It was still very annoying for him to fight against, though. The fact that there was no telling what Otto's next trap could be made it so that Garfield couldn't let his guard down even for a second. As soon as he tracked him back down in the forest, he began to pay attention not only to Otto's actions, but also his gestures and words. For the first time ever, Garfield was actually third regarding rate. Otto as a factor. He was no longer the third-rate bystander he always made him No longer third-rate, absolute chat, and yeah, the more I see Otto just like put in work in the recent episodes, planning, strategizing, different traps, different schemes, right? The hole that he dug, the different bugs that he can command, the random crystal red shit he's thrown up, like, yeah, Otto, I love him, he's doing great. Out to be. That said, it was that razor-sharp focus on Otto and nothing else that caused Garfield to divert his attention away from his surroundings. That's right. Resulting in him falling into the pit trap the hole. on the anime. This was all part of Otto's predictions. He knew he could use Garfield's own naive judgment against him. Because Garfield never once considered him a threat, Otto was able to use that blatant disregard to deceive him, then immediately used the shock of proving otherwise to trap him. It's a moment that marks the beginning of the Battle of the Lost Woods of Cromaldi. Okay, it, so this is what it is. I thought this is some, like, past event that happened that has significance to the episode, but Battle of the Lost Woods of Cromaldi. Okay, Otto versus Garfield and everyone? Before we continue with that, though, there are a couple things that need to be said about Otto's past. The first is that the note he gave said thank you for everything. He didn't yet fully understand the emotion of gratitude, but he did acknowledge that his family treated him in a way that he thought he should be grateful for. That was a very heartfelt so moment. So it was after this that Otto- Yeah, Otto's family seemed very nice and considerate. Mom, mom dad, big bro, like, everybody just seems such a, like, such a wholesome family, and they're rich as fuck too. His family treated him in a way that he thought he should be grateful for. So it was after this that Otto truly began to experience life like a human being. After he was chased out of town by the noble who hired an assassin to kill him, Otto spent the next four years doing fairly well as a merchant. But one wrong read of the trends of the market oil. left him in a dire situation. The oil, right? If he couldn't turn his business back around soon, then he would have been forced to return back home. An outcome he felt he needed to avoid at all costs. I feel like... I hope he's been letting his family know that he's okay. Cause he just like ran away one day, obviously. Because he's gonna get assassinated if he doesn't get out of here. But mom, dad, big bro, after all that, he can finally speak. And then he just, like, disappears? Think about the parents you're thinking, man. Not because he didn't like his family, but instead because he didn't want to cause them any trouble anymore. So, when offered a lucrative deal that could fix his financial troubles, Otto jumped at the opportunity without giving it so much of a second thought, resulting in him getting captured by the witch's cult and eventually being saved by Ricardo. Ricardo. As a merchant who always repaid his debts, this meant that he now had two more to add. That is so funny, though. After Ricardo, like, saved Otto and gave him a little handkerchief to wipe away his tears, Mimi and TV are behind, ready to just tie him up to a pole like this. ...to his list. One to Ricardo for having been the person who rescued him, and another to the boy general who was in charge of the operation. Mm. One of which he was paying back right here in the Lost Woods of Cromaldi. Yeah, all the stuff that happened, right, that we glanced over at the end of Season 1, treating Otto as a random NPC that showed up, and he's like, oh, finally you show up, right? At the end of the day, he's simply repa repaying favors to his perspective. Subaru did, like, save him, right? In the moment that Otto stopped running, he began to contemplate why he was going so far to help Subaru. He didn't find himself to be so sincere that he would put his life at stake with nothing in return. Yet, here he was doing exactly that. Yeah, he called the fucking useless, right? I forget the exact words he said. Something about how, like, he doesn't expect anything from him at all. But there were some good moments happening here. Doing exactly that. As thoughts of Subaru began to fill his head, Otto quickly came to realize why he was doing so much for him. He finally understood that Subaru wasn't very much different from how he once was. They'd both gone through suffering that neither were ever able to convey to anyone. Yeah. It was a path of loneliness that eventually spiraled into despair. So, the Subaru that Otto was helping right now was, was pretty himself. much the kindred spirit to the Otto of the past. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. Because, you know, Otto does fucking help Subaru so much, but it's like, why, bro? Beyond, like, the oil stuff and saving your you, you from, like, money-wise. Um, 
It's his past. He's seeing himself in his past, and he's seeing a reflection. He wants to better himself. To him, helping Subaru here was the same thing as helping himself. To him, he believed he was saving both Subaru Natsuki and Otto Sui. I see. That's why he was able to go so far. Now, when Garfield had finally caught up to him, Otto was immediately knocked to the ground by a blunt attack. It gave Garfield the chance to restrain him by putting his foot on his stomach. No! He then slowly increased the pressure of that foot while demanding for his crystal back. As Otto began to froth at the mouth of the pain of it, he couldn't help but laugh at Garfield's change in attitude. You see, the fact that Otto was able to prove that he could do things that Garfield believed he couldn't, brought forth this feeling of satisfaction that he'd never felt before. It's probably the best frame of Otto I've ever seen. Most likely due to the more boldened eyes and the shading here. It was something he'd only ever heard about from Subaru. But now that he'd experienced it himself, he fully understood why Subaru found it so amusing. So, as he laughed, Garfield did find it to be a little bit creepy. But he wasn't so hostile as to not put up with it. The fact that he was even willing to listen showed that Garfield now respected Otto as an opponent. That said, this too was something that Otto had planned for. He knew that Garfield's acknowledgement of him as a warrior would allow for one last opportunity. Warrior. What so is it? What Otto did was he requested to say one last thing before giving up for good. It was out of pure respect for Otto's recent display of strength that Garfield decided to let him back up and say what he wanted to say. Okay. As a person who could speak to the creatures of the forest, Otto told Garfield that he had angered them, and he said it was for that reason that he needed to be punished. Damn, you have disturbed these woods quite a bit on your way here, Garfield. The residents whose home you have disturbed say this, you must be punished. All the different creatures in the forest. The moment he finished talking, a massive accumulation of mana could be seen forming around him. Oh? This was a pretty big deal, because normally mana wasn't visible to the naked eye. It's only when they're gathered together in clumps on rare occasions like these that they Reinhardt. start to display such a bright luminance. So, this was a display of magic far beyond what Otto was capable of. And they skipped all that shit. <laughs> and they cut all that shit. Otto just... What happened in the anime? Garfield got his ass! And then we have a cutscene. And then Garfield shows up all bloodied and tattered in front of the ruins. And I'm like, well, shit, did Otto die? It was clear that he was... And Otto and Ram, right? Otto kind of gets fucked up. He's being stomped on by Garfield. Ram shows up. There's some fights happening. And then later on, we see Garfield showing up all bloodied and injured. I'm like, are they both dead? Simply the medium in which it was being formed. The source was the numerous creatures he'd spent the day talking to. Every resident of the forest was now pooling their mana together to create this Spear one. Spear bomb, time. man. Spear bomb. It was bomb. the amalgamation of every resource Otto had. This was all his tools used together to create the ultimate weapon. That's crazy. Aldona. Aldona. Is that an earth magic or what is it? A massive burst of AoE earth magic that it is. uprooted pretty much every bit of forest surrounding him. Bro, what the hell? Like, not only can Otto, like, obviously coordinate and talk to different creatures, right? He can also, this is some SAO sacred resource shit, like Alice just gathering up all the, <laughs> all the souls, right? All, all the different things are just giving him more power, just stockpiling. So like, let's say during arc five, right? In season three, during the war, Otto could have huge prominence there if he's able to just like create a spirit bomb from the creatures nearby. It created a riptide of rock, dirt, and sediment strong enough to destroy the trees around him. All oh. of which then made a direct impact with Garfield. It's crazy. This was the culmination and they of skipped Otto's it. plans. And they cut all that shit out. Otto had such an amazing moment highlighting his potential to be not just a strategist, a schemer, but actually fucking put in work combat-wise. Aldona, the, the culmination of all the sacred resources, the, the fucking creatures. Lending their mana to Otto. And then they cut it. <laughs> and then they cut that. That's a fucking L. Right? That's Now, the episode itself is not an L. Because I was unaware of what Otto could reach. But now, hearing the cut content, it's like, damn, they did him dirty. They did him so dirty. Everything he'd been doing had been leading up to this final moment. Crazy. But even that wasn't enough to stop his target. By the time everything had settled, Garfield could be seen clawing his way out from under the dirt, very much intact as the attack was nothing more than a minor inconvenience. <laughs> you see- That's crazy. 
ultimate earth magic got auto use. Well, I don't know if it's ultimate, but it is auto's greatest strength, and <laughs> Garfield just, eh, not much. So either auto's Aldona is like it, it's maybe it's weak, but maybe it's super strong. But Garfield is also just that tough, and it's just showing how much of a tank he is. The key mistake Otto made was deciding to use Earth magic against a person who had the blessing of the Earth element. Oh, I did not know that. Okay, this is the second person I know that has a blessing of the something element, felt being wind element that we see in episode one. But Garfield has the I don't I don't really know what the blessing of the Earth element is, and I probably don't really want to know. My guess is, if you have that blessing. Those kind of elemental magic or attacks are going to be even stronger. You're just more proficient with it because you have blessing of it. I don't know. So Aldona wasn't exactly the best choice for a trump card. Now, despite having been blindsided numerous times, Garfield did respect Otto's efforts. He went up to him after the fight and asked him to forgive him. He knew now that it was wrong to have doubted his conviction. Mm. And for that, he was sorry. It was after this that we- Garfield apologizes? Wow. Wow. Crazy. No, I, I've seen Garfield. I, I pointed that out, actually. With this feed, I was like, what the hell? How did, how did he just fucking use earth magic like that? But maybe it's an incantationless thing that people without... Uh, people with blessings don't need to say that shit. I mean, Felt's attack. What was it against Elsa? She just went super fast. Felt like charged in and was super fast. And Elsa was like, oh... Blessing of the wind. You're truly loved by the world or something. But, I don't know. Cool to see. Saw Ram get involved. Most of which was pretty much the same. But that right there. Literally that scene right there. Is, is that because he's a blessing of the earth user? That he's just so easily just uses earth magic in front of us with his feet and just creates like an armor of earth? Most of Boom. Which was Waiting. The Boom. Same. See that? That was like, wait. He just kicked the ground. How did it turn like this? Like, what the hell just happened here? But to give context as to why Ram couldn't fight for any longer than she did, well, that's because she had awakened her demon blood, an uh. enhanced physical state that she can't maintain for very long without her horn. Ram can also go into demon mode, but it doesn't last as long as Ram because no horn. Okay. So when that limit was up, Ram blood. only had a little more left in her to continue fighting. Okay. She wasn't able to use her physical enhancement, but she was able to get one last attack in. She jumped straight towards the massive beast that was charging her and drove her knee straight into his torso. But unlike how she was able to send him flying before, the lack of any physical enhancement resulted in her bouncing off like a ragdoll, physical damaging her kneecap much to the point that she couldn't even support herself anymore. That's when Otto had to step in and save her. So that was the Battle of the Lost Woods of Grimaldi. But while all that was going on, Super was still trying. All right, now here we come with the oh shit, the moment, bro. And basically, the Battle of Grimaldi sounds like we got robbed of amazing auto scenes due to production issues during, you know, the the C word, right? It's 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 it's, it's just sad to see all that shit happen, but. What's even sadder to see here is the engagement bar of this video and people only cared about this scene, huh? And I don't know, but hey, I'm gonna go take a piss. I'm gonna be right back in like a couple minutes and sorry, a couple seconds. I, 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 I'm gonna get locked in for this part because there's a lot to talk about here. All right, let's get sweaty. Here we go. Trying to find Amelia. Remember, Amelia running away wasn't exactly part of their plans. That's right. Subaru had every intention of having his conversation with Garfield and Shima at the facility. But he fucked his up. His plans just became completely sidetracked because of Amelia's disappearance. In any case, 
We know that Su Why does Subaru run away though? That's what I want to know. Subaru had gone to the tomb. But you're probably wondering how he was able to make it inside. Brute forced it. It seems like he just tanked it. And maybe there's a bit of the resistance that Echidna talks about that was strengthened that helps him get past this. I'm not sure. As someone who wasn't qualified to take the trial anymore, he should have been inflicted with severe internal damage. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's actually what happened. He tanked we it. don't see it in the anime. Subaru forced himself into the tomb all while taking whatever punishment came with it. At first, the sensation of his innards being wrung were absolutely unbearable. But eventually, he did become accustomed to it. Damn. With sheer willpower alone, Subaru ignored the pain and continued to push himself forward, slowly taking it one step at a time until finally coming across the person he was looking for. Rosal will be proud. The reason he was even able to do this was because the damage done by the tomb's punishment scaled directly with the size of the person's gate. Okay. So the bigger their gate was, the more effective the tomb's punishment would be. Oh, and that's why Roswell got messed up so hard. Because he must have a huge gate. Right? He's the greatest magician in Lugunica. It makes sense. So, okay. And Subaru's gate, well, it's just broken. And he's not really that good at magic. So, it makes sense. That's why Roswell was inflicted with so much more damage than Subaru. The beginning moments of their conversation was Amelia letting out all her insecurities. The fact that Subaru never got angry or even disappointed. That's right. It was like a kind of like a callback to Subaru, how he wanted to be called out and be punished for being such a neat back at, back at home with mom and dad. Amelia's like, nah, you don't actually trust me, right? You, you can't even get mad at me because I'm so useless, right? And <laughs> part of me would agree with that in the, in the first half of season two. I think everybody would. But now that she does have the memories back, thanks to... Puck being a deadbeat, I think differently. Was an unnatural level of kindness that slowly built layer upon layer of anxiety within her. Every time she betrayed his expectations, she believed that that would have been the time that Subaru would scold her. But never once did that time actually come. Not from him and certainly not from Puck either. Eventually- Are we coddling her too much? Maybe we are. This is the result of everyone being- oh. Amelia, it's okay. We need Priscilla here. We need Priscilla to call her a half whatever every time she fails. Actually, the failures just continued to stack. And Subaru was there every single time to console her. Although it would work to make her feel better in the moment, it would also add yet another layer of anxiety. It just sounds like the lesson that we're learning is that just being coddling and being there and supporting someone and just making sure they're all good has never worked out for Subaru or Amelia. Subaru turned into the neat he is because of that environment in his family where no one would call him out on his bullshit. Amelia turned this way because she relies so much on Puck and nobody also admonishes her for her failures. What's the lesson here? Stop fucking coddling people. Let him <laughs> experience the brutal nature that is reality and for them to build back up afterwards? There's gotta be somewhere in the middle, right? leaving a feeling that would last far longer than any bit of comfort he provided. It got to the point that she was starting to become frightened by it. So the only thing she felt she could do was run away. When Amelia went on to mention how Subaru broke his promise, he could have listed out all the reasons why he did. But he knew that those were just shallow responses that wouldn't have made the situation any better. It he, was, he just left that night to just strategize, right? So another instance where he breaks a fucking promise. Subaru, the promise breaker, has been a theme since season one, since the beginning. In a world filled with pacts, vows, oaths, covenants, contracts, all that bullshit. My man Natsuki Subaru doesn't seem to really care about any of that. Which is a theme. Nagatsuki Tape is trying to tell us that this hero from a, from a different world is <laughs> shitting on what is existing culture and is defining his own way of meaning, or... Is this supposed to be some sort of character fault due to his personalities? I don't know. Instead, Subaru could only watch and listen as she talked about the importance of keeping a promise. Remember, spirit mages found promises to be one of the most important things in the world. That's right. It's their entire reason for existing. Biku, for example, the fact that she was not able to fulfill her contract, right? She is a spirit. It pretty much means like the pride of a spirit. There's no reason. For you to even fucking exist. You couldn't even fucking uphold your contract, right? Amelia, you know, makes contract with spirits. It's very important. It's a core theme of who they are. 
Unfortunately, Subaru couldn't think the same. To him, promise was a word that meant something completely different. <laughs> Promises are meant to be broken! It was a conflict of beliefs in which one side could only take them lightly and the other was bound by their crippling weight. Even so, Subaru still should have known how important they were to her. Yeah, at this point you would think so, but he broke it yet again because he's too busy doing other shit. I mean, it was only a few days ago that she had gone to lecture him about how much she valued them. <laughs> That's even funnier because with the, with the loops happening, this doesn't feel a couple days ago. This feels a couple months ago, but to Amelia in this run, literally like two days ago, promises are important. Pinky promise, never break them. Oh, you broke them again. So for him to break this promise, even after being directly told by her not to, well, that was something that she simply couldn't forgive this time. Wah, wah. It was after this that she said a line that alludes as to why she finds them so important in the first place. Something about how if she only kept her own promises, then something wouldn't have happened to her mother and- I know Mother Fortuna. But Goose is only one person. And I mean, Frozen Bond memory scenes, right? We did see Mother Fortuna for a frame. We also saw a young person that looks like Bed to the Goose, right? So everything is coming together. What is happening in Amelia's past? Bed to the Goose seems to exist back then. Also, what the fuck is Monther? <laughs> what is this typo and in use? Monther and Goose? Hold a minute. Maybe this is not Mother Fortuna, guys. There's a Monther character that we should be aware of. Now, this is definitely a spelling mistake, but interesting. And let's say for a moment, let's just assume that Better Goose has interacted with young Amelia pre-Frozen Bond. Amelia lost her memories, but Better Goose himself. How come he didn't lose? Wait, did he lose it? I don't know, because he's insane. When he's interacting with us, right? Whenever he sees... There hasn't really been a moment where Better Goose directly interacts with Amelia, though. There hasn't. So I guess I can't really say for sure, but I thought, I don't know, some kind of passage that would hint that Better Goose knows of Amelia in the past, but interesting, man. And Goose. It's an interesting mention of a character that only one other person has ever talked about. Juice. With all that said. Episode 23, when do they talk? I'm talking Better Goose in his body. Although, technically, when you go into the fingers, right? The last finger. The one that's like, oh, oh, my witch. And Amelia like, makes like an ice treat thing and shoots him down. Yeah. But like, he is so insane and everything he says is this devoted to Satala and everything is so riddled with cult-like lingo of like, oh, my witch, my witch, oh, my love. But there was, it was never a line like, hey, bet to the goose. So, so there was, it was never, there was never like, Oh, hey, Amelia, how's it going? Are you and Mother Fortuna still doing well? Obviously, he's not going to say that, but... Season 1, all of the Better Goose and Amelia scenes were... Him just fanatically just insane crying because he sees the body that could serve as the vessel for Satala, but... Now it's seeming like maybe, maybe it relates to the past. Does Goose even remember, right? Because right now, we're going with the assumption that Goose remembers. He could have also forgot the memory somehow. I don't know. Subaru was at a loss with how to respond. Also, I guess explains why Puck seems to be very aware who Better Goose is and said, oh, you've only lived a couple decades, right? At least in that one episode when Amelia's body is dead and Puck shows up in the highway, not the highway, but the road to the mansion to imply that Puck, I don't, Puck, you, did Puck exist pre-frozen pre, pre bond? I, I don't know, but... There's a lot of shit going on here and then. He wasn't sure whether he should apologize, console her, or even act as if he understood her. Shit on her. Tell her she's a fucking sobbing, annoying little girl. None of those seemed like they were the correct approach. What he did know, though, was that he needed to respond in a way that best conveyed how he felt. A way that had the best chance of reaching her heart. So it was here that he gave a confession that fit neither the time nor the place. <laughs> He's just always saying this shit. I love you. I love you. You don't know what you don't even know what what is love. Why do you love me? I love you because I love you. Why? 
because I love you. Following it up with a string of scolding remarks that went to hurt Amelia's heart more than ever before. Mm -hmm. They were words that Shit were on her to the conclusion that she was hopeless. Right as they were both about to reach that same verdict, Subaru stopped in his tracks just so that he could make his confession one more time, stealing the moment right before Amelia could accept that she was hopeless. It's a scene that was pretty much taken word for word from the novels, okay. but there were a couple cut lines where Subaru may have taken a bit of inspiration from Rem. Eight, no, no, no. Last episode did feel like episode 18. It felt like Subaru learned from Rem from episode 18, took some notes down, and brought it out for this episode in season 2. It truly felt that way. Stuff like how no matter how much she hated herself, he would never come to hate her. That's right, it's your perception of how you see yourself. You're my hero, Amelia! And even if everyone abandoned her and despised her existence, he would still stay by her side and keep pushing her forward. Now, this line is very interesting. And I'll, like, about how even if everyone leaves you, I'll still be you. Like, even if everyone leaves you and hates you, I'll still be with you. Anytime Subaru is interacting with Amelia, in the back of my mind, I think about how this could potentially relate to Satala and how, if possible, that a subconscious memory or some sort of thing is leaking out when talking to Amelia as if he's talking to Satala because it seems like Satala, Amelia could be the reincarnation of Satala, who knows, but Subaru definitely could be the reincarnation or someone that resembles the old love that Satala had for that man. And even the Shadow Garden scene that implies that there's another version of Subaru that has the memories that knows why he loves Satala, right? And the more I think about shit like that, and this is like, again, there's a Shadow Garden scene, and this is web novel cut content. And web novel is not directly proof that it's going to be kind of material for the light novel stuff. But episode 25 or 24, the finale of season one, when Subaru like throws the bomb away, and there's a huge explosion, and he falls unconscious as Patrash wraps him up, he goes to Shadow Garden again and talks with Satala, but not just Satala. He hears this voice. It's him. It's him with his own memories telling him about, don't forget who you are. Don't forget what you must do. Don't forget what you must say. There's a bunch of things to hint that there is an idealized version of Subaru that has all these memories that before he lost it, whenever the fuck that happened. And then he wakes up, then he talks to Amelia, then he mentions about, I'll name 2,000 things that I love about you. Why 2,000, right? That's, ever since then, I'm like, okay, they're, they're, maybe I'm crazy. Or maybe Subaru is un, like subconsciously saying shit that is perhaps meant for Satala, but it's being told to Amelia. And every time this kind of shit happens, I know he's talking to Amelia, but I'm always thinking from the back of my mind, how does this relate to Satala? It was because Subaru understood exactly how Amelia felt that he was able to say the very same words that once saved him. As their conversation continued, it escalated into the heated argument that amounted into both trying to say that the other was wrong. Subaru was desperately- I love this scene. Them just honest feelings coming up. You're useless, fuck you. He trying to tell Amelia how he truly felt. But he was trying so hard that even he could tell that his words were coming off as cheap and empty. Even if Amelia herself wasn't able to tell. There was no doubt that these were Subaru's true feelings. I and love you! this was his once-in-a-lifetime confession in which he was putting every part of his body and soul into. A confession that Amelia refused to accept. Refuse. Eventually, both became so emotional that their argument devolved into a back and forth without any logic whatsoever. <laughs> I love that this whole scene was just both sides shitting on each other. And finally, no more coddling each other, no more EMT. Nah, let's just say our honest thoughts. It's been fucking two seasons in a bit. How do you really feel about each other? It was like two little kids throwing a temper tantrum just saying whatever came to their mind. And you're not wrong. They are two little kids. Now, Amelia's true age, perceived age, mental age, blah, blah, blah. She's a fucking toddler, bro. She's like 14 in the head. And Subaru, he's a fucking neat. 17-year-old neat. Subaru was trying to blame Amelia for him being so caught up with her. And Amelia was trying to blame Subaru for making things harder for her. She was trying to say how she didn't have time to think about Subaru the way he thought about her. So, both went on and on about how they thought the other was making things worse for them. It just went to show how far their conversation had fallen. After a bit more back and forth, Amelia finally got to the point of asking why. She'd been watching Subaru break his promises- Why did you break your promise? Because I love you. Ever since they got to Sanctuary. So, this constant disregard for the very thing she found so important 
made her so overcome by anger that she couldn't even voice any other opinion now. The only thing she wanted to know was why he kept breaking his promises. Why, bro? It made it so that their conversation was now pretty much an extension of the argument they were having back at the capital. The focus of which was Subaru breaking his promises and not being able to tell her why. Mm -hmm. So Amelia was now in the exact same position she was in back then. The only difference- But this time, we got a kiss out of it. How the fuck did that happen? The difference this time is that she decided not to berate Subaru. Instead, she decided to talk about herself. She felt that her missing memories made her develop into who she wasn't supposed to be. That's right. And the fear that if I change, will you still love me? It's something about like, my identity. If I go through this trial, I'm going to fundamentally change. I'm going to get all my memories back. I might not be the same person. Will you still be there? She felt that the person who she was right now was wrong. If nature dictated that the memories accumulated over the course of one's life determined who they were, then that would mean that Amelia's false starting point made her become who she wasn't meant to be. It would mean that the path she was meant to walk and the destination she was meant to go to were completely wrong. When Subaru heard her say this, he began to remember the advice from his mother. <laughs> That's right. The ends justifies the means. Who cares about the shit in the middle? But again, this is not his mother saying it. This is a mother created by Echidna using Subaru's memories and then saying lines that she would perceive the mom to say. So part of me has a schizo theory that these are Echidna's words to make and convince Subaru to take the if greed route of taking the contract with Echidna. But Subaru's interpretation of this ironically went against Echidna's desire to take the contract and infest, ended up cucking Echidna in her own graveyard with the Amelia present making him realize that the starting point and journey didn't matter. What was right and what was wrong was left solely to the discretion of the individual. Yeah, Subaru don't really give a fuck what Amelia is all about, as long as she's still that beautiful, silver-haired, you know, half-elf. That's all he cares about, right? Everything else just didn't matter. Who cares? As Subaru tried to convey this message, Amelia And thematically, let's think about that. I, feel, I can't really piece it together or try to like put it into words what I'm thinking right now. So let me try to just give you the, uh, the, like the, the points that I'm thinking about. The main point that I'm thinking about right now is ends justifies the means. Who cares about the start and the middle point? Now let's think about Subaru's obsession with Amelia. The beauty, right? The silver hair. Elf-like, I mean, she is an elf. She's a half-elf, right? He has a bias for that. Of course, he fell in love with her because she helped him out in Lap Pillow and Arc 2 and stuff like that. But let's then think about Satala too. If for whatever reason, Satala ends up being a girl that shows up and replaces Amelia, maybe that was the true destination at the end of the day. I don't know. I feel like somehow this ends justifies the means and how Subaru has lost his memories with Satala. And later on, if Satala returns, somehow Amelia being... I don't know. I don't know how this all makes sense, but there's something about that line that irks me with the possibility of, like, Satala replacing Amelia or something and Subaru getting his memories back. And who cares about the start and the middle of who Amelia was? Because at the end of the day, the true goal was the love for Satala. Therefore, it doesn't matter if she gets replaced. I don't know. I don't know. Still continued to refute it. She wouldn't allow herself to accept Subaru's words anymore. So Subaru had to resort to the only option he had left. In action- <laughs> Spam, I love you. Action that would convey his feelings when nothing else could. A kiss! Dodge it if you don't want this. I'ma go in with a kiss. As we saw, the end result was a kiss completely opposite to the one he'd experienced the loop before. That's right. The kiss of death, right? Crazy shit. And like- this kiss, again, just feels weird to me at a first glance because this is a girl that doesn't even know what love is. She doesn't know what the fuck she's going through. She just got her memories back. She's so unstable, so volatile. You got Natsuki Subaru just simping over her over and over. And in this moment where, in, and since the beginning of the finale, I, I mean, since the moment that he met her, I, you could potentially say that he's been trying his best to, quote unquote, groom her. I think there's a lot of different definitions and interpretations of what that could mean. But I don't think that he's a groomer. A lot of the different talking points that people give. Let me try to bring up the comments on Patreon. Let me try to put, hold up. I wonder if these comments hold any value right now. 
this is a very a lot of people have splits takes on this and I want to write it off as a what's the word a culture difference right North American values where individualism leftist leaning values like myself and Japan where this may seem chivalrous and not something manipulative right but just find that comment here and read you out loud what other people think. Someone says, like you said, let's, let's bring this up. Let's bring this up. We got the logs here. Episode 15. Like you said, you're being way too woke on this lol. Something about how this person fucking said this message makes me want to block this fucker, but hey, you do what you want to do. If Amelia rejected Subaru and then he tried looping to redo and try another report, then he will be grooming. No. Multiple takes is all it takes to do grooming. How about everything that Subaru has been doing from the beginning? Like, your take right now is that he's looping and looping and looping until Amelia actually just, like, accepts him. But that's not the only way this could be done. How about the different... How about everything that's led up to here? How about every time Subaru just by Amelia's side trying to coerce her into, like, going on a date and always trying to force a hand on her, a reward or something? But Amelia has never rejected Subaru, even to go on dates with Dale Luke's. Yeah, Amelia never rejected Subaru because she kind of gets forced into doing things that she has no idea of. What's a date? I don't fucking know. What's a... See? You know what I mean? The rejection part, you're making it seem like she has her own independent thought of understanding. Like, you cannot tell a fucking minor that they know what they're talking about. That's why... Grown people that have that understands more about society can manipulate young people into agreeing with different positions that they probably wouldn't agree on later. And Subaru has never looped to try to improve his romantic situation. I mean, that's your opinion. I would argue that all these loops only have helped him improve the romantic situation, intentionally or not. He has always respected Amelia's will in this way. I don't think he really respects Amelia's will. I think that he always just fucking forces his hand on her. Like, genuinely, from season one, from the beginning, he's always had this wrong idea of who she is. He has this, like, idealized image, and she has no idea why the fuck he's around her. And then he always does something to make her, like, get forced into a situation to go on a date. And yeah, she agreed. Does she even know what a fucking date is? No. Subaru 100% knows. In fact, it's from the season one passage of like a date is, you know, when two people that may like each other go on somewhere on together and in the heat of the moment, who knows what could happen, right? Motherfucker also accepted Petra's date after fully understanding that. Agreed. If he was repeating days to try to get closer to her, repeatedly coming into her while she was rejecting him, it would be an issue, but he doesn't do that. Listen, I'm not denying this, right? Like what you guys saying are true. And the grooming thing as a joke is it's a half true. There's a part of me that still thinks that even if he's not intentionally looping over and over to play this like a fucking visual novel, somehow it feels like him just kind of being by her side when she's alone, isolated, has nothing else to rely on. And then being put in a position like this and then he throws a kiss at her, even though he said like, if you don't want this, dodge it, right? It just feels like Amelia had to be forced into a position. And again, Subaru didn't create this position, right? Roswell... And him following the grimoire has created this situation where Amelia is isolated alone and is dependent on Subaru. And Subaru is simply taking advantage of the situation in a non-sinister way. Nor do I even think that he thinks that he's taking advantage of it. But he's just doing what he thinks is right. But it, to me, it looks like everything is just so forced right now. That's my take so far on this episode. The more I think about it, the more I realize that this position, this situation is created for Amelia to be unstable, to be alone, to be dependent, and then to be forced a hand that she may not even agree with, but at the heat of the moment that she took the kiss. People think that this kiss is somehow, let's see, what's the other take? This one. I think Roswell says something along the lines of, if you wish for it hard enough, echidna, oh, this is about the qualification stuff. Where's the other comments about this? When this came out, Amelia fans were hyped. Uh, meanwhile, Blue Harry Girls fans were molding. Rem, I mean, who's Rem though? She's forgotten, bro. And going through the stages of S-word and a new faction for Auto 
was a step. <laughs> How do I feel about when Amelia kissed him in the Taste of Death episodes? That's a mime broken Amelia that kissed Subaru. Like, why do people actually try to bring that episode as a point of argument to justify the kiss of episode 15? Do you genuinely think that the kiss of death is somehow grooming Subaru? Like, what is the take here? That's what I don't understand. A lot of people seem to bring up this moment, and it's like, okay, what about it? No, 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 but what, what about it, though? What about that scene adds on or somehow, like, highlights different ways? Do you think that mind-broken Yandere Amelia in the Kiss of Death episode suddenly is a reason why Subaru kissing Amelia now is perfectly fine? You think like that kiss of like, no, of course not. That's fucking crazy. I think both Western and Eastern fans and Subaru might not consider this as the best kissing time and condition. I 100% agree. Still better than the taste of death. Well, shit, that episode was just fucking a nightmare. However, it is what it is. He may not have other choices to make Amelia pass her trial in time. Agreed. She needs to feel somebody else cares about her in the most convincing way, I guess. And here's another thing, right? The more I try to analyze this scene, the more I realize that the author has created this impossible scenario where the kiss is permissible, even if you think it's grooming or not, because it is the point of the story where something needs to happen. And now we're put into this position, right? We are literally put into a position where Subaru needs to like somehow push Amelia forward. And we're in a position where the kiss might be the only answer to do that. Mind broken does not excuse things though. You cannot be genuinely arguing in chat that the kiss of death the mind broken amelia kiss like, like are you like are you actually here saying cancel amelia because she kissed subaru at the end of the kiss of death after she was mind broken what do you do you, you honestly feel this like you're not even trolling this is your genuine take that <laughs> amelia needs to be canceled what she did was fucked up to super- No shit! Like, what are we talking about here? We're talking about two separate examples when someone is literally fucking mind broken and insane and another situation where two people are having a conversation in the heat of the moment a kiss happens. What are you talking- And no consent. Oh my god. I cannot believe Emilia R. Ward Subaru. Cancel her! The scene between Amelia and Subaru does seem quite weird in the anime. Like Subaru is trying to manipulate or groom her. But again, I don't think he's intentionally doing this, right? My take is Subaru is not intentionally manipulating or grooming Amelia. But all his actions and the position that Amelia is in, it just seems like that's what's happening. For once, I'd suggest reading the web novel chapter straight up. <laughs> then people are going to say, web novel's not the real content. It's just, light novel's the real thing. Web novel doesn't count. The thing I find most interesting about Amelia's scene is Subaru doesn't ever bring up why he chose to love and follow her. That's the fucking thing too, right? It's just, why do you love me? Oh, I love you. Wh wh why do you love me though? B -b because I love you. And then there's the whole line of, I love you and that's why I believe you. But No. It's because I believe you that I love you. It's this bullshit fucking circular loop. And the more I think about it, the more I realize, what if this is the intent, right? What if this is intentional, that Tape is creating this circular argument where there is no beginning and end? Remember, the end of the beginning, the beginning of the end was the first episode, right? And we talk about how his, he lost his memories or Satala and the indescribable love. Maybe we're not supposed to really know why he loves and follows her because he's doing this subconsciously due to the memories and the love he has for Satala, which is now being projected onto Amelia. If you then go in with that argument, then I think that makes a lot of sense. Doesn't he just love her personality and appearance? He does. He has a bias for silver-haired elf girls. We've seen that in his room. He has a lot of figurines like that. And there's also the scene where Amelia is the first one to save Subaru and give him a lap pillow, right? For those reasons, it makes a lot of sense why the 17-year-old Neat 
would fall in love with Amelia like that. But he never tells her these things, right? And the more I think about it, the more I want to believe that the author is intentionally positioning him like this in order to highlight how these are subconscious memories and love that's projected at, you know, Amelia when it's from Satala. Maybe, maybe that's the one mental gymnastics I can do right now, right? All right, uh, Super doesn't ever bring up why he chose to love and follow her, which is the fact she was the first person to be nice to him in this world and see someone who can be a good person if surrounded by good people. Exactly, right? This is literally like the first season reason of why, you know, Subaru loves Amelia. I think it's a good moment for them. I wouldn't say it's set up, but Subaru did the kiss as an ad lib. Like, I think when she said he wouldn't make her believe, he felt in the moment he had to do something way above beyond what someone would normally do, right? Exactly. See this position? He's forced into a position where he needs to prove with action, and the kiss may be that action. I don't think Subaru is intentionally doing this to manipulate and groom Amelia, but again, everything from an outward glance makes it seem like he is doing it, but again, everything is set up by Roswell to create the scenario from happening. That honestly feels like the only way she would accept it. Is Subaru going Chad and basically saying, I'll show you because doing this isn't something someone would do unless it was true kind of thing. But like you said, it's not his fault. And she's like this and the situation happened. That's straight up it, right? This situation was created and it's not Subaru that created the situation. And he's simply just dealing with it. And the dealing with it that he's doing is seemingly looking like he's grooming, right? Wouldn't Subaru telling Amelia about any of that trigger the heart grabby thing? Like in episode 13, uh, no, that has to do with telling the secret. It, he doesn't have to mention it, right? Wouldn't Subaru telling Amelia about any of that trigger the heart grabby thing? Oh, it meant if you actually go into detail, right? Back at the royal palace bed, whatever that scene was, back in arc 3 when Amelia left on us, right? Subaru wanted to explain, but he couldn't. That's what he's talking about. He doesn't have to specifically mention the exact thing he did, blah, blah, blah. But I think that that pretty much wraps up just like the overall takes, right? At the end of the day, I think that most people would agree that this scene felt weird. And it felt weird at a first glance because it seems like this emotionally unstable girl who has no understanding of what love is, is being forced to kiss upon her by a guy that's been chasing after the entire time. But if you look beyond that and analyze a bit more of how this even happened, it was Subaru doing the one thing that he could do to show her some, some proof of action in a situation created by Roswell and the Grimoire that made this seemingly grooming situation happen. And I don't blame Subaru for it, but I'm also not going to sit here and be like, yup, this is an amazing scene. It's a, it is an amazing scene, but I'm not going to be like, yup, everything is fine. That's the episode, guys. That's just my opinion on how this scene unfolded for me. I don't blame Subaru, but the scene was kind of weird. Unlike the cold taste of death, this one carried nothing but life. It carried a feeling that would serve as the foundation to build their relationship anew, okay. leading to the emotional climax in which Subaru helped Amelia to find a reason to believe. But anyway, that's, that's it. pretty much it for episode 40. So I hope I was able to add a bit more to the story and make it a bit more enjoyable for you. Absolutely. I think the highlight of this video was... There wasn't really cut content that would have explained why Subaru did this, honestly. It doesn't really explain anything more. In fact, reading over the Patreon comments and talking with you guys in chat and rationalizing my final take on this has made more sense to me. But the coolest thing here was fucking Otto's moment, man! Otto! Aldino Dona fucking uh, spirit creature is in the forest! Give me your energy, spirit bomb moment! Skipped. Fucking skipped. Sad. Sounds like Otto had an amazing fucking moment that we'll never be able to witness, but it is what it is. Please go give Mr. Any News a like on the video. Here's the link. And I will see you next time.